Hey guys, welcome to On Two Wheels. What makes 140 horsepower, has about 1300 cc's and costs about 20 grand? You guys are looking at it. And this is our 2015 lightweight sport bike shootout. So for the past several years, if you wanted a small bore sport bike, you could either buy a Kawasaki or a Honda. Kawasaki's Ninja's been around for a lot of years, but recently they updated it with all new bodywork and a new 296cc engine. Honda's CBR has been around since 2011, but in 2015 it was updated with a 286cc motor and bodywork more resembling of the CBR family. Now, KTM and Yamaha have joined the fray. Yamaha with the 321cc R3, an engine similar to the Ninja's 300, and KTM with the RC390, which is a 373cc single. So very similar to the Honda, just a bit bigger. Yeah, obviously they're hoping that if a little bit's good, more's better. As it happens, we received these bikes the day before we were heading to the racetrack, and since they are sport bikes, we figured, why not start there? Honda's CBR300 is the lightest and the cheapest but it also has the least power by a long shot. Truth is, it's a terrific track bike, but boy, you better make it a small track. The CBR handles really well. The suspension's balanced, the brakes are excellent. Unfortunately, so few ponies means having good brakes is kind of wasted at a racetrack. The Ninja 300 is the heaviest bike here, but that doesn't hold it back at the track. The Cowie's parallel twin has a sky-high redline and makes solid top-end power, so it's a blast to ring its neck. The only thing that holds it back are soft brakes and the fact that it doesn't put down as much power as the KTM or the R3. Still, this is a good choice for track days, and compared to the R3, the Kawasaki has better suspension and stickier tires. Yamaha's R3 is the second cheapest in the test and makes more horsepower than every bike except the KTM. The dash displays lots of data and it looks awesome. There's a gear position indicator and even a shift light. When we first rode the R3 at the press launch, it felt like Yamaha equipped it really, really well. Plenty of power and solid brakes, although there's no ABS available. But riding it back to back with the competition showed that it's the worst handling bike of this group. A soggy shock and sketchy tires are surely to blame. KTM's new RC390 is the most expensive bike here, but it's also the most powerful and is far and away the best for track duty. We rode the RC at the track in Italy at the bike's press launch and were impressed. And once again, the 390 put a big smile on our faces at Chukwala. This isn't a beginner's bike, it's a small sport bike that just happens to be suitable for beginners. The RC is tall and narrow with a high seat and low clip-ons, just the setup you want for carving corners at the track. The only thing in the way of pure track day bliss are wooden feeling brakes and a bouncy back end. Even so, the KTM kicks ass. So that is what we learned riding these bikes on the racetrack. But as we know, they're not really track bikes, are they? No, I mean, these motorcycles are designed primarily for the street and the people who buy them, I mean, that's where they're gonna ride them. They're gonna ride them around town or in the canyons. Exactly. So we've literally run completely out of light. It's dark at the racetrack. We're gonna get up early tomorrow, take these things on the street and hopefully learn a lot more. The next morning we geared up and hit the street. Low on horsepower, but high on style. We spent some time riding around town to make sure all the bikes were suitable for the daily commute. With similar riding positions, it's no surprise that the Honda, Yamaha, and Kawasaki are perfectly comfortable. The KTM feels more aggressive, but it's still totally acceptable. But like any good motorcyclist, it wasn't long before we headed for some twisty roads to have some fun and to find out how these bikes stack up in their natural habitat. Riding an Ninja 300 really reminds us exactly what we like about little bikes, which makes sense because the Ninja is sort of the original. The Ninja 250 has been around for decades, and the Ninja 300 is a, an evolution of that, and a good evolution at that. The 296cc motor works really well. It doesn't have a whole lot of torque, but when you spin it up, it's got a lot of life. It just feels like it wants to play. but. In this company, it has to be said, the Ninja does feel a little bit long in the tooth, even though the Ninja 300 is pretty new. One department where the Ninja really struggles is brakes. There's enough power to stop the bike. They're not dangerously bad or anything, but there's just not a lot of feel. And if you're a new rider, 
you're not gonna get a lot of confidence from the brakes. When the Ninja 300 first came out, I thought, eh, the styling doesn't really do it for me. I think the KTM is pretty ugly, but I think at least it looks like something. I think the R3 is beautiful. It looks like a little sport bike, exactly like it should. I don't know what it is about the Ninja. It just seems like it's trying too hard. I think the biggest thing the CBR has going for it is just refinement. I mean, the brakes, the suspension, the gearbox, the ergonomics, it's all really good. It's really hard to find fault with any of it. I guess the only real drawback is outright horsepower and performance. But if you ride this bike in isolation, man, this is a sweet little machine. This thing is light, and nimble, and stable, and it goes exactly where you want it to. And overall, the suspension is pretty damn good. CBR might not have the most power, it might not be the most sophisticated, it might not be the sexiest, but man, this thing is refined. It handles really well, it's super lightweight, draw response is perfect, brakes are great. The only thing it's really lacking is outright performance, but if that's not your thing, then man, the CBR is a wonderful motorcycle. I've stolen the KTM. Ha ha ha. And the first thing that I'm going to do is do a wheelie. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> yes! Yes! The RC390 sets itself apart in a couple of different ways. One, it's the only one of this group of four that's not from Japan. And as a European bike, it's almost like KTM wanted to stick up for Europe and show what they're all about. So KTM's riding position is much different than the other bikes. It's much more aggressive. The bars feel lower. The seat is definitely higher. It's still light and agile just like the other bikes, but it has a sort of poise about it that you really only get from a European bike. One of the compromises of an aggressive riding position is comfort. Not only is the seat tall, but the pad is really thin. And for me, the KTM is definitely the least comfortable of this group. The other aspect where the KTM is lacking a little bit is brakes. It has these Bybri brakes. Bybri basically stands for Bi Brembo, and it's the sort of affiliate of Brembo brakes. And the deal is they're cheaper. The lever doesn't adjust. The caliper is not as high quality and you can feel it. Not nearly as good as the brakes on the Honda and probably not quite as good as the brakes on the R3 either. But it hauls me up the mountain. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel cool. It makes me feel like I'm riding a real motorcycle. And if you're into sport bikes and you're an enthusiast, you can't help but like it. You know, Yamaha had plenty of time to study the competition with the Ninja 300 and the CBR 250 and 300, and they basically did everything and did it a little better. The bigger motor, 320 cc, got more power, really good mid-range, and an awesome top-end rush. But I'd have to say my favorite thing about this bike is the dash. I mean, it's like a proper R6 dash with a big tachometer, digital speedo, shift light. I mean, it's got all the features. What's holding this bike back is the suspension. The shock is just so soft, and it feels like it sits super low in the back, which makes the steering heavy. As is the case with a lot of Yamahas, the brakes are not the greatest. It's got decent bite and okay feel, but not quite up to the level set by the Honda, although they are better than KTM and they are better than Kawasaki. But overall, this thing is a ton of fun to ride. I'm super excited to twist this thing up. Listen to that engine thing. I think they nailed it. This is an awesome little motorcycle. So we've accumulated a lot of miles in these bikes. We did two days of dedicated canyon riding, we've commuted on them for weeks, and we even did that track day out at Chukwala. Right, and speaking of the track, when it comes to performance, really KTM's RC390 is kind of head and shoulders above Absolutely. the other bikes. The motor's bigger and faster, but also the riding position is really committed, and it sort of speaks to uh, performance riding. Yeah. But as it happens with this group of bikes, uh, performance isn't always what you're after, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a factor, but the truth is these motorcycles are designed for a wide range of people, hopefully including some people who have never thrown a leg over a motorcycle before. Indeed. And if that's the case, the CBR is an absolutely great option. It's the cheapest, it's the lightest, it's really well balanced, it's got fantastic brakes, it's, it's overall, it's a well-refined, sweet little motorcycle that's also really good looking. Yeah, agreed. And the same kind of stuff can be said for Yamaha's R3. Yeah, truth. I mean, if someone wants to get a small sport bike, the R3 is a fantastic option. It's got that super high revving engine. It's got the second most horsepower here. And of course, it looks absolutely stunning. I mean, it's just dripping in sport bike style. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of leaves out Kawasaki's Ninja 300, which in the past has been a real bright spot in this class. Yeah. And it's really the same bike it's always been. It's pretty excellent in a lot of ways. 
But what's happened with all this competition is the Kawasaki's been kind of pushed into the shadow a little bit. If you want a high revving twin, you get an R3. If you want yeah. pure performance, you get an RC390. If you want, you know, easy beginner life, CBR300. Yeah. So while the Kawasaki is still a great bike, it's not quite as outstanding as it used to be. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that both of us are just excited that the manufacturers are pouring this kind of energy into this category of motorcycle. I mean, Absolutely. we now have four great bikes, so it's a fantastic time to be a beginner. Absolutely. Fantastic time to be a motorcyclist in general. Yep. So that concludes this episode, guys. Thanks for sticking around and stay tuned for more content on these bikes and more episodes of On Two Wheels in the future.